And uh, today's topic is going to be fairly broad. We have a lot of different subjects to cover, uh, and it's going to be a very general August update for you. So first and foremost, I want to thank CBC for continuing to allow me to run this show for you. I hope that you're all making great use of it. I hope that this uh, continues to be a source of very valuable information for you as you join me here for these conversations on a biweekly basis. If at any point in time you wish to hear a little bit more about a certain facet of Bolton's government, about the happenings around town, please feel free to send me an email at townadmin at boltonct.org, and I'll be sure to make sure that uh, we're getting that information for you just as soon as possible. As has become a bit of a tradition since quarantining began back in March, I have a very short, I'll try and keep it as brief as possible, uh, emergency update for you. And today, it's not so much about COVID-19, although I do want to let all of you know that since I was last on the program two weeks ago, uh, there haven't been any substantive changes from the governor's orders. Uh, I do want to clarify for everybody a little bit about the travel advisory that's been discussed uh, at the state level, and that has been implemented, I should say, at the state level. Uh, the travel advis advisory and the subsequent quarantining that has to occur uh, for anybody who's traveling into the state of Connecticut from at one of these states that has uh, a certain positivity rate as set by the state government uh, must quarantine for 14 days. And there are only very specific circumstances that might allow you to circumvent that 14 day quarantine. Um, and it really only applies to individuals who are considered to be the absolutely most essential employees. Uh, and now, if you're looking for more guidance on that, I really encourage you to go to the state's website to learn a little bit more. Uh, I know that I learned a lot about it this past week, even though there have, there's been a lot of information about it uh, on the news and whatnot. Uh, and the state's website has the most comprehensive information possible. Uh, I also want to let you know uh, that uh, we have a tropical storm that's approaching us, and that's actually set to make landfall in and around the Long Island Sound area around 1 p.m. today, uh, with gusts that are reaching up to 65 miles an hour, sustained winds at or above 40 miles an hour, uh, and this could be a very serious storm that could leave folks, not just in Bolton, but all around the state without power for a considerable amount of time, uh, and it could cause other property damage uh, along the way. So I want to encourage anybody who feels ill-prepared for such a storm uh, to please take a moment. You can certainly find this recording online later uh, and shut this off. And please go be, get prepared. Uh, for anybody who's on a well, if you are in a circumstance where uh, you don't feel that you'll have enough water saved up, uh, you should please go out, get that water, um, get batteries if you're going to need it for electricity, uh, and make sure that you have everything you need to weather this storm in good health. Um, so thank you for bearing with me through that update. Now, as promised last time, I want to have each of my programs highlight some good news that's happening around Bolton. Uh, and that's been happening around Bolton for the last several months, despite the fact that we haven't been able to hear about it as readily or see it as readily. So I put a call out on social media just yesterday, uh, and I'm going to continue to do that and continue to ask you to send me your stories, send me a list of the accomplishments that you've been able to uh, reach and achieve over the course of this quarantine period. Uh, and let me know, what have you been up to? Uh, has it been inspiring? Have you been able to work with others uh, collaboratively during this time? And do you have some feel-good stories that you'd like to share with the larger uh, CVC community here uh, at the Community Voice Channel. So one part of that, uh, or, or one response that I received in the last two weeks comes from Jackie Steele. Uh, and Jackie Steele is a Bolton resident, and she helps to run uh, Bolton Troop 73, which is a boys troop, as well as, I believe, a relatively newly formed uh, Troop 1073, a girls troop. Uh, and both of these based out of Bolton right here in town. And uh, she sent me quite a bit of uh, a lengthy letter about what they have and haven't been able to do during the pandemic and how scouting's been impacted. And I want to share that letter with you today. And again, from Jackie Steele. Scouting amid a pandemic. Scouting has had many challenges during this pandemic. The scouts were no longer able to have their weekly meetings and they weren't able to go to their usual camping trips to Maine, Western Massachusetts, or even to summer camp at the camp in Rhode Island that they all look forward to each year. But what have we been able to do? 
We have had bi-weekly meetings on Zoom to keep scouts engaged and working on merit badges virtually slash online with the CT Rivers Council, which included scouts from around the country, including friends that have moved away from the area. A new scout troop was started on May 1st so that girls can also get the full scouting experience that their brothers have been able to experience for over 100 years. This new troop at this time consists of five girls that bridge from the Arrow of Light Cub Scout Den and they are very enthusiastic and can't wait to get out and get camping. Both troops have been going on day hikes. We have been trying to hike every trail in town and we have been wearing our masks and social distancing. We didn't start hiking until it was deemed safe by state and local authorities as well as authorized by the Connecticut River Scout Council. All the scouts have been excited to spend some time with their friends in person, even if it's with a mask on and even if it's six feet apart. We have a scout that is completing his Eagle Project at the Bolton Heritage Farm. You may have noticed the new garden going in between the driveways next to the road. Many of the plants in the garden were generously donated by local Bolton gardeners and funds were donated by local civic groups to help with other experiences. Fellow scouts, community members, and members of the class of 2022 helped to break ground, remove grass, turn the soil, and plant almost 40 plants in the garden. Putting the garden in and keeping it water during this hot, dry summer has taken more than 100 hours alone. Our greatest thank you goes to our community of Bolton. We typically have a can and bottle drive two times per year, in the spring and in the fall. In March, when we were all forced to be home and grocery stores stopped taking returnable bottles and cans, it was asked on Facebook, in Everything Bolton, if anyone was collecting bottles and cans. We as Troop 73 and the new 1073 stated that yes, we were collecting and any and all bottles and cans could be left at 21 Williams Road, the steel home. After that initial answer, the troop posted on Everything Bolton that our plan was to have our usual drive in May, but in the meantime, bottles and cans could be left at this address, and the troop challenged the town to break our previous record of 20,000 bottles and cans by trying to hit the goal of 25,000. The response from the community has been nothing short of amazing. The Double Bay Garage has been filled to the rafters. We have had scouts come and sort bottles and cans to send to redemption centers three times so far, and each time the scouts have sorted at least half of what has been in the garage, and each time the emptied space has been refilled to where it had been before, so we can have the scouts back to sort again. To date, we have sorted and returned 32,800 bottles and cans and probably have another 10,000 to 15,000 in the garage. This has brought a total of $1,640 in for the troops so far. 70% of that money goes into separate accounts for each scout that works on sorting bottles and cans with us for them to use in their scouting career for things like summer camp, trips, and, and we take that we take during the year to help defray costs of their registration fee. It's up to the scout as to how they use those funds during their scouting experience. The other 30% goes to the troops' general funds to purchase merit badges, council fees, awards, a free camping trip each year for the scouts, and many other things. The scouts are very grateful for the support that the town has shown them at this time. Yes, we are still collecting bottles and cans, and they can be left at 21 Williams Road by the garage. The scouts will be at this address again on August 8th, sorting once more. And again, so that's a very heartfelt message from Jackie Steele. So thank you to everybody in the community who's been able to come out, offer up their bottles and cans as a means of supporting that scout troop. Um, that's a very uh, clear and easy way that we've been able to help, and, and that community organizations, I should say, have been able to help children continue to be involved and engaged in the community during this very troubling time. Uh, and I know that as the schools uh, begin to look to open, at least to some uh, partial degree, and uh, as other community programs continue to rev up, we'll continue to have those conversations, perhaps be able to have individuals join us by Zoom as guests uh, so that we can continue to social distance here at CVC, but also make sure that you are getting all the information you need uh, to have your children get involved, engaged, uh, and connected with the community. 
On a, more or less a, a similar note, I should say, in terms of getting involved and, and getting interested in what's going on, we also have resumed our Concerts on the Green. Um, so that Concert on the Green series, it, they occur every, uh, sorry, I shouldn't say every, but on select Wednesdays. Uh, they started this past Wednesday. My understanding is that there were probably 50 or so folks in attendance. Uh, the maximum cap right now for these concerts is 100. Uh, so I recommend that you get to the green in advance, make sure that you uh, have a great spot to set up your blanket or chairs, whatever the case might be, and make sure that you're as distant as possible. Um, and the next concert on the green is going to be held on Wednesday, August 5th. Uh, that's with the group Rock Solid Alibi. They'll be performing at 6.30 p.m. And then Night Shift Band will be performing on August 12th, also at 6.30 p.m., and that's a Wednesday as well. For more information about the subsequent uh, performances that will be happening. I recommend that you go online. Uh, we have on our Facebook page information about that event that's been posted, as well as on the recreation website, which can be found via link through bolton.govoffice.com, the town's website. Um, and Please remember that we are continuing to social distance at this time. Uh, we recommend, and the state is enforcing, uh, 15 feet be split between each blanket or each set of chairs uh, for family units that do come to our concerts. And once again, uh, we are limiting, because of the size of the green, that number to 100 individuals to come and participate in that concert. So recommend that you show up as early as possible. Next, I want to talk to you a little bit about, uh, not necessarily as uh, fun and entertaining as certainly some of our musical guests are, uh, but the an economic vitality plan that I've had the opportunity to come on to uh, this show before, and my predecessor, Joy Stilley, has had the opportunity to talk to you about quite a bit, uh, and talk to you about this economic vitality plan. Um, so four towns were able to come together starting in 2019, and those towns are Tolland, Coventry, Mansfield, and Bolton, and engage with uh, a group called Advanced CT that works as a nonprofit on the state level to figure out how to best encourage uh, economic development, economic growth, uh, and moreover, sustainable growth for communities just like us. Small, large, uh, everything from your college towns like Mansfield to uh, your smaller rural towns like Bolton. And they sat each individual town down uh, separately, I should say, in early, 20, early to mid-2019. Heard a lot from certain residents about the challenges, the strengths, uh, the struggles that each of our communities has had to go through in the past, and some of the barriers that we see to economic development in our area. Um, and then later on in 2019, uh, Advanced CT pulled all four of these communities together and we had a group conversation about what is it that we all do well, how can we capitalize on a lot of these strengths, uh, and what is it that we can do to further each other's goals, not just look to help ourselves, but really look to uh, forge ahead together uh, in a really meaningful and helpful way. And this study was just completed last week. I received a copy of it, and it's now available on the town's website. Again, that's bolton.govoffice.com. You can go there, and on the home page, if you scroll down just a little bit, you'll find that the economic vitality plan has been posted. It's a 98-page document, um, and, and that sounds a little scary at first. But what I want to talk to you a little bit more about today is a matrix that came with that 98-page plan. This matrix, uh, which can also be found on the website and a link just below the full report, outlines uh, about, well, several dozen different action items that each town and the towns together as a collective unit can take to further our mission of economic development in the region. So, for example, I'll just read a few of the different items off of this matrix. So uh, Advanced CT has suggested that we all look together to uh, streamline our land use regulatory process as necessary. And that's going to involve a lot of different community partners. That's going to involve input from uh, the residents to figure out uh, you know, are there a number of different zoning regulations that continue to be wanted and not wanted? And of course, we have a planning and zoning commission that's been elected to represent uh, individual feelings in town. Um, so the planning and zoning commission will certainly be involved in that conversation, as well as an economic development commission um, and staff at town hall. Um, other programs uh, that 
uh, certainly they, the advanced CT uh, group has suggested that we take on is to brand ourselves on a regional basis. And that's something that we've talked about a little bit on our past shows here, is the idea of town branding. Coming up with a succinct way to describe Bolton's, Bolton's uh, town identity to the world around us. Um, as some of you know, we have a seal uh, that will continue to be used as part of our branding process as we go through it. Uh, we have a slogan that's been used historically, that's a town for all seasons, that we're currently evaluating. Um, and these are some of the types of components that are used in a full branding process. Um, but it's the, what Advanced CT wants to do is not just have each town look introspectively and say, what is it that we can advertise to the outside world to encourage folks to come here to spend money at our businesses and to buy houses here so that all of our uh, all homeowners in Bolton are seeing their, uh, uh, the, the value of their homes rise, uh, but also to say, what can we as four towns come together and say that we want the whole world to know uh, is done well in our corner of the state, uh, is an attraction that will bring people here. Uh, and there are a number of different areas that were covered. Certainly agriculture is a very large component of Bolton's identity. It's a very large component of Coventry and Tallinn's identity. Uh, and we're trying to look to ways to increase, whether it be agritourism, whether it be supporting some of those small farmers, uh, to look to ways to encourage that through a regional brand. Uh, so there will be a group that will come together to talk about and eventually decide on how to market this area of Connecticut uh, and other examples of really successful marketing, not just in Connecticut, uh, but put even around the country. When you talk about the Gold Coast in Connecticut, you know that you're talking about the general southwestern corner of the state. You're talking about uh, your Greenwich, uh, some of the very wealthy communities that exist as suburbs right around New York City. Um, and while that wasn't a formal branding campaign, it's very successful at getting folks to know about a specific area of our state, to know a little bit about the identity of that area. Certainly very nice homes, very nice houses, uh, encourages people to potentially want to move there. Um, and that's something that we might look to do here. Another example of that's the quiet corner up a little bit beyond us so over in Tallinn County, or sorry, I should, <laughs> I should say Wyndham County, beyond Tallinn County. Uh, they have done, uh, not necessarily on their own, but uh, certainly around the state, an identity has grown uh, for that region. And similarly, we will look to do the same, figure out how to identify not, not just agriculture, but in terms of our natural heritage, in terms of the history that exists, uh, certainly between Bolton and Coventry alone, you have the Nathan Hale Homestead, as well as the Bolton Heritage Farm. Um, and uh, there is a lot to share with the state at large and the country at large. And I'm very excited to get our region all the more recognizable on a map. So if you're interested in seeing the rest of this matrix, I again recommend please go on our website. We are accepting public comment between now and I believe it's August 21st. Yes, 5 p.m. on Friday, August 21st. You'll have the opportunity to email us. You can send those comments either to my email address, which is townadmin at boltonct.org, or to Patrice Carson, who is our Director of Community Development. And her email address is pcarson that's P-C-A-R-S-O-N at boltonct.org. Um, please send us your thoughts. There are opportunities to make changes to the plan as it stands. Uh, and there are also opportunities for us to change the prioritization that we have for a lot of these plans. Perhaps uh, Bolton residents really think that there are certain items on this matrix that are more important than uh, individuals over in Mansfield might think. We want to hear that feedback. We want to be able to advocate for Bolton as much as possible in this process. And we want to make sure that we have a plan going forward that the entire town stands behind. So. Um, Beyond that, please also mark your calendar for Wednesday, September 16th at 7 p.m. Advanced CT will be having a Zoom meeting at that time uh, where you will have the opportunity to listen in to a presentation on the full 98-page uh, proposal, uh, action plan, I should say, just in case you're not interested in reading all 98 pages on yourself. We understand, and we have this presentation available for you. Uh, and after that point, we will be, as a town, uh, 
having a group of folks who come together with representatives from these other towns and we will continue to check off all of the different items on this action list so that we can make sure that Bolton uh, is, is rising with the tide and we can make sure that we all continue to prosper here in town. So I'm very excited about this economic vitality plan. I hope that you are too. At some point, I may have the opportunity to do a whole segment on the various steps that we'll be taking in the next year or two based on this plan once it's approved. Um, so again, we really encourage your comments and your feedback. I wanna to talk to you all about uh, the exciting opportunities that we've had in town hall this past summer, despite COVID-19. Uh, to engage with uh, not just residents, but in individuals who are very interested in serving in town government and serving the Bolton community directly. Uh, we've had the chance to have three interns, college interns, who have come, uh, whether it be in person at a socially distant manner, in a socially distant manner, or over Zoom, have been able to participate in these internships. And one such intern, uh, her name is Alexa, and she's had the opportunity to engage with us in the Sustainable CT program. And that's another uh, item that I've been able to come on and talk to you about a little bit in the past. And I really recommend if you go back in the CVC archives and you haven't had a chance to learn about Sustainable CT, there are some great videos uh, there uh, that we've been able to put on, as well as at sustainablect.org. Um, and Alexa has been working with Patrice Carson, our Director of Community community development uh, to put together a going green community education page that can be found on our website. It's in the leftmost column uh, on the home page of the website. And it's by that exact title, going green community education page. And it's really focused on two different items uh, that will help Bolton be all the more sustainable in its practices and, uh, and not only uh, I should say in the workplace and in town hall, but at home. And the first item that it covers is food waste prevention. And something that I wanna share with you that I'm guessing might raise some heads is that we actually pay uh, our hauling company, uh, and I should say our, our trash collection company, uh, us more money each year if, depending on the weight of the trash that's collected. Um, it's called a tipping fee. And so the more food waste that we throw out, that we throw into our trash can, the more money that's spent out of taxpayer dollars that's collected by the town each year. Uh, that's something that I certainly wanna prevent. I wanna make sure that we're paying as little as possible for our trash collection to make sure that we're running as efficient a government as possible. So I wanna encourage each of you to think about how can we prevent that type of food waste. And one of those ways that's very well articulated by Alexa's Going Green page is the act of composting. Uh, so composting it, uh, there are a lot of different components to it, and a lot of folks think that it's very challenging, that it's very time consuming, and also potentially very costly. Alexa's laid out a number of different ways that you can get uh, ready and get started with composting for just, I believe it's $25 or less. Um, we are also going to be putting together a campaign where you'll have the opportunity to buy a startup composter for a very low, low price from the town. Um, and I encourage you to get on there and learn about how you can get started with composting now, uh, especially while we're in quarantine, while each of us potentially has a little bit more time on our hands uh, to think about how to live more sustainably, how to live more in a more friendly manner with our yards, with the environment around us, uh, and to really get invested in uh, not just the sustainable aspect of it, but also the aspect of lowering our taxes. Uh, uh, that's certainly something that I think everyone can rally around. Beyond this, I, I really only have a couple other items to talk about. Um, first and foremost is that if you're watching this live, and again today the date is August 4th, 2020, uh, if you are watching this live, then know that tonight there are two Board of Selectmen meetings that are set to occur. Uh, and I say set to occur, uh, because we do have a possibility of this storm taking out power to a significant amount of Bolton or portion of Bolton. Uh, and in the event that that happens, we won't be able to have members of the public or uh, selectmen be able to call into those meetings. That's something we wanna avoid. So there, please know that there is a possibility that these meetings may be postponed. Please look online if you have the opportunity to uh, find out a little bit more later on in the day about if these will be postponed. 
Uh, but first and foremost, at 7 p.m., we have a regular Board of Selectmen meeting uh, that will be held. We have a number of different items that are going to be addressed. As always, we'll be having a short report on the status of Bolton Lake, which for those of you watching right now, please know uh, that everything has been positive. We haven't seen a resurgence of that algal bloom, uh, at least to date, um, that we saw earlier on in the summer. So please stay tuned. Uh, we'll have a bit more of a report on properties and facilities. And we will be talking about the various COVID-19 preparations. The first selectman will talk a little bit about the completion of the four town economic development report that I just discussed before uh, and more. So everybody's encouraged and invited to participate in that board of selectmen meeting. Uh, you can call in and call in information for that meeting can be found online on our website, specifically on the agenda itself. Down at the bottom, you'll find a phone number as well as a meeting ID that you'll need to access the meeting. The other meeting that's happening tonight is a result of longtime town treasurer Kay Peterson uh, retiring. Um, she's been involved in local government, municipal government, for over 50 years, uh, which is an incredibly impressive task. And Kay, if you're watching, I really want to thank you for your time and your service. Uh, we greatly appreciate it uh, and really it will be challenging to fill the shoes that you've left behind after all these years. Uh, the Board of Selectmen will be convening a meeting of its Human Resources Subcommittee at 6.30, so that's before the 7 o'clock regular board meeting. Uh, and the subject of that Human Resources Subcommittee will be to consider and possibly act on rec recommending an individual to fill the vacant position of treasurer. Um, Kay did retire effective as of August 1st. Um, so at this time, uh, we will be continuing to discuss how to uh, best fill that role. Beyond the Board of Selectmen meetings tonight, next week, if, uh, and again, I shouldn't say next week in case you're not watching this live, but I should say on Tuesday, August 11th, the Zoning Board of Appeals will be uh, potentially convening if there are items on their docket. That would be at 7 p.m. and it would, all of these meetings will be available via Zoom. No one should come to Town Hall to try and access any of these meetings as they're not happening in person. And on Wednesday, August 12th, we will have the Planning and Zoning Commission uh, meet again via Zoom uh, so that all can connect in a safe and orderly manner. So that concludes my report for today. I want to again thank you all for having, uh, taking the time to join us to learn a little bit more about the tropical storm that's coming. Again, I really encourage you, if you feel ill-prepared for this storm, please go out, find some water, uh, make sure that you have the electrical components that you need. Um, and if you are somebody who's at risk and you have some machinery in your house that need, requires electricity uh, and is needed for your health, please reach out to us so that we can be, you can be identified and we can be all the faster at responding in the event that there should be a power failure. Um, Thank you again for your time. Please, if you have these positive stories, email me, call me. Uh, my information is available, uh, I believe, both at the bottom of my screen has been uh, throughout this, this session and is available on the Town of Bolton website at bolton.govoffice.com. Uh, thank you all, and I will see you in two weeks.